And there's a whole series of kind of subjects as part of this. The story of Cockney, Speak Cockney Day, Can You Succeed in Advertising, Film and PR with a Cockney Accent, Cockney Bengali Rhyming Slang, You're Having a Laugh, Is There Such a Thing as Cockney Humour, etc, etc. And a whole series of subjects and debates that you can take part in. And one of the people behind this is Andy Green um, from Cockney Conversation Month, who's on the line now. Hello, Andy. Hello, Robert, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good indeed. Um, first of all, what, what brought this uh, what this whole kind of event about? Is it the fear that Cockney is, is dying out? Well, it was triggered by a big news item 10 years ago that said that Cockney would die out on the streets of London within 30 years. And I'm quite a stupid person thinking if I see something wrong, I've got to do something about it. Uh, so we organised an event last year, and from that has emerged this thing called Cockney Conversation Month uh, with a partnership between my social enterprise of Grow Social Capital and the Bengali East End Heritage Society uh, to really make Cockney fit of a purpose for the 21st century. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it, you mentioned the, the Bengali community, who, who clearly these days will be some of the great carriers of the flame of, of Cockney speak. Um, Very and, much so. And Cockney has always been inclusive, hasn't it? Uh, it it's, it's included, it's included uh, Romani slang, it's included Yiddish, it's included all of those kind of elements, Irish, that, that make up the, the kind of London diaspora, if you like. Absolutely. It's always been multicultural over the centuries. Um, and we're actually a bit concerned because from our conversations, I think in certain quarters, people have sort of been labelling Cockney as something that's um, exclusively white, working class and racist. And it's clip not that it's never had that heritage. And uh, as I say, we're doing our best to uh, really promote a Cockney identity that's uh, so inclusive of all races and creeds, uh, that everyone who identifies with being sort of a, a non-establishment London. And, and that's interesting as well, isn't it? Because my family were West London, very, very young. Yeah. I'm not sure any member of my family ever went east of Aldgate. Um, but... Oh, it won't let you in. <laughs> but they were about as gore blimey as you can get. And, and they had fruit and veg stalls and could shout their wares and all of that stuff. So that idea that Cockneys, you know, you have to be born within the sound of Bow Bells, I've always thought that was kind of nonsense. It's, it, it, it's almost a choice you make to be a Londoner, if you like. It's a form of self-identity, and yeah. as I say, the Bo Bell's thing emerged from a poem of, uh, that, as I say, Cockney had existed well before that. Um, and, yeah, as I say, it's um, a, perhaps a myth associated with the Cockney identity, but we've got, as I say, anyone who self-identifies as being London, non-establishment, and that includes, as I say, your, your, your great family in West London as well as East London, and you've got the diaspora now that's gone out to Essex, Kent and beyond, and around the world. So it's very much an identity that I'm London, but I'm not like the establishment London. That diaspora thing is interesting, isn't it? Because someone just said to me, if you really want to hear a London accent, go to Stevenage, because it was one of those overspill towns where people kind of left in London in the 60s and 70s uh -huh. and still talk like that out there. Or you might, yeah. go, you might, or you might go to, to, you know, Essex, as you said, or or down in Kent to hear that South East London accent more. Yeah, we had one of our so we had a talk with a socio linguist uh, expert yesterday, and if you want to sort of capture a pure Cockney accent of like say um, like twenty, thirty, forty years ago, there's the place to go. But the fundamental point she made is it's constantly evolving, yeah. and so uh, this thing that's is, is labelled multicultural London English, which socio linguists use to describe the current vernacular, um, that really, as I say, is still Cockney because it's emerged from working London people and contains elements of what was there before and will form the basis of what Cockney grows into over the decades and centuries to come. I love all of that because I, one of my great delights these days is sitting on a bus, uh, you know, when schools have just turned out or if there's a lot of teenagers on board and yeah. trying to tune in and listen to them. And their language is creative and clever and quick and fantastic. And it's really, it's very different to what mine was when I was young and totally different to what my dad or my granddad's would have been, but it's a London accent. Yeah, and in, in 10, 20 years, I will regard as old-fashioned London yeah, as well. Yeah, it's true, because it, something like like slang is or not because it is more than slang and it's more than accent it is it is a dialect isn't it really well i say it's more than that it's an attitude yeah. it's a sense of who, who you are in the world and how you respond to the world around you we think it's based on like inclusive values of being like resilient and defiant resourceful and it's also this really sort of irreverent and stoic wit yeah. that you know characterize what we perceive as, uh, as a cockney yeah i, I mean i th i think 
it's interesting because in some senses we might have thought that all of the regional British regional accents might have died out by now because you know we all have the same t radio yeah. television but but the Scouse accent seems to have got stronger and stronger the the Geordie accent ain't going nowhere do you know what I mean it, so regional accents are definitely surviving well they they are the, that's largely the good news but there is some worrying sort of trends that all regional accents Cockney Scouse Geordie Ouija and stuff they're showing slight signs of decline in really? their usage and there's data on online data that can track usage of terms and stuff and there's a worrying sort of dipping that we're we're going to be merging into an England as opposed to a, a place that's rich in locality and rich regional variety let's look at some of the different subjects you're going to be talking about the story of Cockney and 50 objects for example <laughs> Yeah, so we're planning, um, inspired by the British Museum theme, um, with lo everyone's got their own story of Cockney, so what would be the five objects that characterise your story of Cockney? So I'm going to put you on a spot here, Robert, saying, I'll make any nominations we, uh, for, and we want to curate uh, from people submitting um, their own story, so we, from this we can create a virtual exhibition uh, of individual people's story of Cockney. And uh, So that will go out of that next Thursday, so please, we've got an expert from the British Library, Library, who've got a fantastic collection of archive material, uh, plus a Pearly King, a Brick Lane activist, and a few more to sort of share their individual five objects. So what would be your five, mate? Oh, blimey. Or oh, any, 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 any nominations on the I suppose it'd be a QBR scarf or something. Well, a, a bit, a, something, yeah, a QBR scarf might be one of mine, or a, a, a bit of fruit and veg so that I could shout, who wants banana? Who's got the banana? <laughs> A, a banana might be one of mine because my family yeah, used to find one. And, 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 and a great repulse in the sea. I'll have a banana. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, uh, so it, it, it's those things that are very evocative, isn't it? It would be, exactly. it, it, it would be the bell of a totter. Um, yeah. As they used to go around the streets crying out for, you know, uh, uh, old iron, who's got uh, the old iron? You know, that sort which of Which is rich in your memory, but wouldn't be to maybe less to other people. So having that would share that story, capture it, celebrate it. Yes, yeah, that's a great one there, mate. Absolutely. Or, or a neckerchief as well. My granddad always wore a neckerchief under his collarless shirt sitting there. Well, uh, listeners, you heard it here first. Next year's fashion trend. <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned the Bengali thing, and you've got Cockney Bengali rhyming slang as one of the subjects, haven't you? That's right, yeah. So, um, uh, say in the same way that, um, uh, like I say, Cockney's emerged, like what we accept or has been accepted as, as a current Cockney is infused, in the same way that the, the Bengali community uh, and there's different uh, languages within the community itself um, face a challenge of, like, how can they best preserve and retain that rich culture, but in a context then of a, uh, the, the world they're living in, in East London and beyond. Um, and so, again, what emerges from that is an, an incredible synthesis of new culture. Yeah, and it is that it's such. It's very interesting that because, as you said, it is constantly changing, and and as, like a city in London is constantly evolving and changing and morphing into something else. But, yeah, it's, uh, but it's really important that that we, I you know, f I with my accent and my accent wavers it goes all over the gap yeah, yeah. Um, you know depending on who i'm talking to and what context i'm in i was a grammar school boy so i, I spoke yeah. i spoke one way back on the council estate and another way at school do you know what i mean yeah. we've, we've all, all done that to a degree yeah. but but I, i've been marked out by my accent you know at all well as all well said you're branded by the tongue in this country yeah uh, and uh, as I say so, um, and again, we're living in an age where we're respecting diversity, yeah. and that goes beyond like race and gender and so on, and sexual and gender, but also like social class. So it's not about saying all oh, like people with working class are as good as others. They've actually got a richness that is that they're differently able that can bring to the party. But uh, what's worrying is that, as I say, there's this um, what we've, there's a current and undercurrent of like identifying Cockney as white working class racist, and it's not. That. It's big, you know, no. as I say, it's a far bigger thing. Uh, I'll tell you what's alarming. The Mayor of London's cultural strategy, I'm not making a political point, the Mayor of London's cultural strategy, 35,000 words, 180 pages, doesn't mention the word Cockney once. Um, well, how much, no, I think that is interesting. How much do you think that that sort of slightly cartoon Cockney of East Enders... Um, that sort of, you know, sort of sing-song, slightly overdone. Yep. How much is that kind of, or in some ways almost derided, not derided, I don't quite mean that, but it sort of undermined the real thing, if you like. 
That's right. We was double edged because uh, I think as Oscar Wilde is one said, like, one thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. So yeah. there's a positive there. But then there's a sort of this old caricature. Um, I watched the film To Sir with Love on the fly back from Australia uh, last month, and yeah. uh, in the memory of Sidney Poitier. Yeah. And there's a scene in this 1966 film of Lulu playing a Cockney, yeah. uh, and she refers to rhyming slangs as what old people use. <laughs> um, and so there's, there's always been this sort of uh, tension, disconnect, and so on. Um, uh, but as I say, the, the danger is it becomes a sort of parody uh, g- cultural ghetto rather than recognised as a very rich resource. Because, OK, mate, you say like, you, like your, your accent, it might have been like a, a barrier in some things, but it's also made you the person that you are today, Robert. Absolutely, yeah. No, and, and it's something I'm extremely proud of. Of that, there's no doubt whatsoever. Uh, where, how can people take part in all of this? Is it all online? What's the... it's, it's, we've got a series of weekly online events. If they go to our website, www.growsocialcapital.org.uk, uh, there's details of all the events. Our next event next Thursday, lunchtime, the story of Cockney and 50 Objects, and weekly events after that. Uh, our Cockney Conversations Month is from uh, March the 3rd to April the 4th, the 3rd of the 3rd to the 4th of the 4th. There you go. And you heard it from the horse's mouth. Andy Green, <laughs> thank you very, very much, mate. God bless you, man. I love your book, The Way We Were, by the way. Oh, one thank of my you. favourite books, mate. Well, read the next one, London Made Us, because that's that's the one, really, that it, it talks about a lot of this stuff. Absolutely. So I recommend to your re- uh, listeners as well. Thank you very much, mate. Oh, what a charming chap.